This is Dayton Audio's new 15 inch maximum excursion subwoofer and today we're going to be doing a home theater build with this tuned down to 20 hertz. You're not going to want to miss this. This is one awesome subwoofer build. So let's get building. Now this subwoofer enclosure is going to be big, but it's going to dig deep. In fact, it gives you house shaking bass at 20 hertz. It's pretty amazing. I enlisted my friend Robbie to help me cut down some of these sheets because they were going to be so large. And then we decided to start trimming them up on the table saw. Now you might have noticed that I didn't actually show you cutting it with that straight edge that we used. And that's because, well, the camera battery might have died. Okay, it did die, but at least you're getting to see them cut on the table saw, which is really the cool part anyway. Right? Now you're going to see a lot of pieces cut because there's over 20 pieces being cut. And that's because we're going to really brace this thing to make this a very inert cabinet to give you the best sounding bass possible. Now for this, I don't have to use the CNC, I could easily just use a jigsaw. But like Uma Thurman eloquently put it in the movie The Producers, if you got it, flaunt it. And although I'm flaunting it, I'm not flaunting it as well as Uma Thurman did. Either way, it's back and enjoy. Don't worry, I'm not going to show you cutting all the braces because there's a ton of them. But this particular brace is kind of interesting because this has a circle cut out behind it to make sure that there's enough room for the magnet and basket behind the bracing. So you're probably thinking that's a lot of bracing. It's not. In fact, that's not even all the bracing we used on this. Just keep in mind that this particular build, it can create a lot of pressure, which can really make those cabinets flex. So to make sure that the cabinet doesn't flex or resonate, we're using a lot of bracing. Now, if you want to paint the ports, you're going to want to do it before you assemble. So I went ahead and painted the ports, but you'll notice I'm actually wiping it on. That's because the spray paint bottle actually broke, and this is really the only way I could get the paint on. But I didn't want to waste a whole can of spray paint, so wipe it on it was. I really like these corner clamps. They allow me to be able to keep everything nice and straight and 90 while I'm gluing the rest of it together. And they really are a lifesaver. They're not too expensive either and you can pick them up right on Amazon. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description. Now if you thought those were the only clamps I was going to be using, think again. These are the Rockler clamps that I added next and these go ahead and clamp it down nice and tight now that I know that everything is 90. This is a nice little trick and it keeps everything nice and straight. Now it's time to install the ports. Originally this was going to be just one big long slot port, but it's really too long to make one long slot port. You really need to separate this. So instead of doing a 15 inch slot port, I decided to separate this into three separate ports. Each port is going to be five inches long. By doing this, we're going to maintain the rigidity of the cabinet and still keep the same tuning frequency.
Now, in order to maintain correct spacing, you can do this one of two ways. One way would be to create some spacers that go in between each and every one of the ports. Another way is to just quickly make a pencil mark on the outside edge at both the beginning and the end and just align that when you glue it down. Now, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out all the glue. I mean, why wouldn't I? But what you'll really notice here is that two x four. If you notice on the two x four, I ran a two x four that extends a little bit past the subwoofer and that two x four is at the bottom edge of those ports. Now, the reason why I did this is because once you clamp down on the top of those ports, that's gonna wanna lift up that bottom end. So you're also gonna wanna put some pressure on that bottom end to make sure that you got a nice good pressure all the way around. Now, if you think your middle is also gonna have an issue, you can clamp that as well with the exact same technique. And now with almost all the work complete, Robbie decides to show up again. This ends up being a reoccurring theme throughout this build process. I do appreciate the help, Robbie. And of course, my camera died while we clamped up all of these braces, but here they are in all of their glory. But the one thing you're gonna to wanna to notice is the clamp closest to the port does leave airspace there so that the port can fully breathe. By the way, did I say I like clamps? I like clamps. And of course we see Robbie sitting on the couch watching a little bit of TV. But who can blame him? He had never heard Atmos and he got to listen to Ford vs Ferrari in Atmos, which is one of my favorites. So, really can't blame him at all. Oh yeah, I painted the sub orange. Now for a build like this, I'm gonna go ahead and use a Speakon connector because I'm gonna connect this directly to my Crown XTI 2002. Also, one of the main issues that I hear most people talk about after they build a subwoofer is they hear something rattling inside. More often than not, that's actually their speaker wire. So I went ahead and wrapped mine up with some Acoustafoam and used a little spray glue to keep it on there. It's a nice trick to make sure that you're not getting rattling wires. Now you might think that this subwoofer is pretty big. It's really not that bad for a 15 inch subwoofer. It's 35 inches tall by 18 inches wide and 22 inches deep. And this thing digs down deep, 20 hertz deep easily. And it really can shake the room. Me and Robbie had a blast just blaring this thing all night, as well as testing it with a couple other subs. In fact, you should check out the subwoofer shootout video if you haven't, because that actually tests all the subs that you're looking at in those pictures. Now on top of that, if you want to build this exact subwoofer, go ahead and check the website. There's going to be some plans on there. Or if you want to just check the forum out and see what other people have done with the MX-15 or what they've come up with, also just go ahead and check the website. I think you'd be surprised at some of the cool things that's going on there. Alright guys, this is Toyd's DIY Audio. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you get an MX-15 because it's a whole lot of fun. Until next time, this is Toyd's DIY Audio. And I'm out.